Nafi bin Hilal and Muslim bin Awsija were preparing for the battle that would start at dawn in the burning desert of Karbala. Smiling, Nafi turned towards Muslim and said, I swear by Allah, these are the most precious moments in my life. I have never been so contented. What else should I ask God for? He has fulfilled all my desires. Muslim replied, I feel the same. The blessing of defending Imam Hussein alayhi salam in the final moments of my life, I feel such peace. Nafi replied, if I look at my past, the memorable moments were those that were spent in the service of Imam Ali alayhi salam and Imam Hassan alayhi salam. I have always thanked Allah for those moments, but this is different. It's the climax of my life and my service to the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Future generations can only wish to have participated in the Battle of Karbala, defending Imam Hussein salam, but the Almighty Allah actually honored us with this favor. You spoke of serving Imam Ali salam, and Imam Hassan salam. Tell me more, Muslim requested. I participated in the Battle of Sifin and Nahrawan, fought along with them against Muawiyah's forces and the Khawarij, Nafi replied. Muawiyah refused to accept Imam Ali salam, as the leader of the Muslim Ummah and wage wars against him. On the other hand, the Khawarijis claimed to abide by the holy book but follow their own interpretations of it. They refused to listen to the Ahlul Bayt salam, the divinely appointed interpreters, Nafi explained. Nothing has changed. Even today, they refuse to submit to Imam Hussein salam. Yesterday, they opposed Imam Ali salam. Today, they're against his son, Imam Hussein salam. Yesterday, Muawiyah was the enemy of Islam. Today, it is his son, Yazid, side Muslim. Nafi agreed, saying, It all goes back to what transpired after the death of the Holy Prophet wasallam. The event of Ghadir was ignored. If all the people had taken Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, as their imam, that day we wouldn't be sitting here today. That night, Nafi and Muslim candidly shared what they truly felt were the reasons behind the Battle of Karbala. Muslim sharpened his sword, whereas Nafi, who was the best archer in Imam Hussein's camp, inscribed his name on the arrows. Muslim said to him, you have so many arrows, I pray to Allah that each one of these pierces the enemy in the heart. Yes, brother, I will teach them a lesson. They will surely feel the bitterness of the conflict they have started. I will send as many as I can directly to hell, Nafi assured. As they walked towards their camp, Nafi looked around and said, Why did all these warriors leave? They had claimed to be sincere supporters of Imam Hussein salam. Muslim answered. They were after the world. They believed that the Imam would rise to power and therefore they joined his camp. Now that the Imam has made it crystal clear that whoever stays with him will be killed tomorrow, they have decided to take off. Nafi said, by abandoning their Imam in this manner, they have actually supported the enemy. Tears rolled down his cheeks and his heart ached as he continued, Brother, I don't fear for my life. Rather, I fear for my Imam Hussein ibn Ali alayhi salam. I don't want to live to see him killed. Why is the enemy treating him and his family like this? Have they forgotten that the Holy Prophet's words? Hussein alayhi salam is from me and I am from Hussein. With the cries of the children in the camp, he couldn't control himself and burst into tears. The deadly battle was underway. The Imam's companions were going to the battlefield, one after the other. Nafi sought to permission from the Imam and started shooting his arrows at them, addressing them thus. I will shoot the arrows that bear my name. I don't fear you, for the fearful lose the game. His arrows struck the targets, killing many of the enemy soldiers. When he ran out of arrows, he took out his sword and attacked them, reciting the following. I am the follower of Ali and the son of Hilal Jamali. You cannot flee from my sword, will surely kill thee. 
He continued to fight until he surrounded and captured by the enemy. They took him to Umar ibn Sa'ad. Look at what you have done to yourself, Umar said, pointing to Nafi's wounds. By Allah, you have gone astray. I have killed over a dozen of your men and wounded many and do not regret. Had I had the strength to continue the fight, I wouldn't have fallen captive, Nafi replied proudly. Umar ibn Sa'ad ordered Shimr to behead him. Shimr immediately took out his sword. Nafi said to him, If you were a Muslim, it would have been very difficult for you to face your Lord as a murderer. I thank God that he chose the worst of his creatures to end my life. <laughs>